Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing Express APIs tutorial series. I'm Aditya. In this video, we will see how we can create authentication routes like registration and login routes. And so without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so one thing if you notice guys, whenever we start our server, this all queries are running one after the other. So there's an alter table query and everything, everything is running one after the other. Now the reason being, if you notice we have init over here, which runs these queries, while we just need to create a connection and we just need to run a query. So we don't need to alter tables. We don't need to do all those execution all over again. So how we can just connect to the database? Well, it's really simple. So we use the authenticate method from SQLize. So in this case, this SQLize will refer to our SQLize, this one over here. And we just say SQLize authentication connection has established successfully, unable to connect to the database if there was any error. And we can close the connection once we are exiting from the API endpoints. But make sure once you close the connection, you have to create all this instance again. So, it, so SQLize needs to create a new instance again. So in this case, I've just taken the code from here. What we could do is instead of calling init, once our database is migrated and everything is good, we can call connect from here or we don't need to call actually connect from here. We need to call connect whenever we run database queries. So first we connect and then we make queries and we can close the connection and we can do this again. Now, by default, SQLize keep the connections open. Uh, so just need to make sure if you want the connections to be kept open, don't run the close query or close function. So in that case, let's start begin. Let's begin with our <laughs> user route. So first we will have a registration and login route. So here I'm going to write app.post register and then a callback request response and then some registration code. Now what I'm going to do here is I will be using this bcrypt library. Now this library, what it does is it hash your pass password password the reason being we have to hash passwords whenever we are storing it in database we shouldn't store them as a plain text so this library will do the hashing for us and we will do the synchronous hashing so it has this compare sync and it should have hash sync there we go so we'll just use the synchronous hashing and we will use another amazing library, which is Express Validator to validate our incoming requests. So we just want to make sure that the requests that are incoming, they follow certain rules like email is an email string, something like that. So these two are very amazing libraries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install them or yeah, one after the other. So Express Validator first, script. And now we just need to wait till it installs and then we can straight away start using it. So what we need to do is we need to get the bcrypt from bcrypt itself, like something like this from here. So let's just copy from this, put it over here at the top over here. And we will need two things from Express Validator, which is going to be the body and the validation result, this one. Now how it works is you can either use body or params or uh, sorry, parameters, they have the middleware, validation middles were defined over here. So you have bo check, body, param, or query. So body will check for the request body validation. Params will check for URL params. Query will check for query parameters. Now, in, if you are unsure, like if you want to make it plain, like if you want that to search in everything, you can use the check middleware. So check middleware, what it will do is it will see for the request body cookies whatever you are uh, whatever request parameters we are asking it to validate for and it will look for everything so i'll suggest you have a look on this express validator documentation it's really clean documentation i would say and it has given everything and one thing about this is that it is just a wrapper around validator.js with additional functionalities being added so you can see those additional functionalities in uh, i guess it's in validation chain api so here you could say additional methods but you can always look for validator JS for what functionalities we could use by default. So these are all the validation rules. Perfect. So let's begin by creating our first validation. So what we need for our register. So if I go for user, we just need to have first name, password, last name, and email. So these are mandatory fields. ID and ID is auto incremented. So we don't need to worry about it. Contact is optional, but we can take it. But for we write here register. And now how can we validate this? 
what you do is you write the middleware between these two parameters so url so whatever if it's a get request post request whatever for those get post delete put fu functions which i'm referring to this one the first parameter is the url the second parameter was actually a callback to run for that url but now what we could do is we can add some additional parameters here and these additional parameters will be our middleware so how will it work first parameter as url additional parameters middleware and then the extreme or the last parameter will be the callback to run for this particular url so what we could do is we can add the rules here so let's get those first so you say const body and validation okay let's just take it like this require express validator and then we can get the correct one so validation request result actually so this one and now what we need to do we can use straight away the validation rules so for email we can check for this password we can check for this we can also prefer or give our own validation rules so that's not a problem so what we are going to do is we will just go over here and we can have body that will be our first name so we are asking to check for the first name and we are saying that it should be string and we are saying is length of uh we could we need to give min max so i'll say minimum it should be of three characters so let's say five characters or let's say three and then we want to make sure that it's not nullable so i'm going to say not is empty so this should be filled up uh, like there should be a value for this it shouldn't be blank now we just need to use the same for last name and if we want to add another validator we just add it as a another middleware over here so this would be last name that goes for email now so for email we could do things differently we could just say is email and we can remove this from here and here we could say password so password will be string or you can give different uh rules for password you want to make it like three to five or three sorry six to 16 characters however you like it but just need to make sure that it is there like you're just putting some validation rule for it now once this is done we will have our final function which would be our callback to run for this thing so first what we need to do is we need to check if the user exists so here i'm going to say const user and we will need the user model from that i'm going to say find first uh, find one actually and here i can give the where clause so if i go for uh, sequelized documentation and if i go for model querying basics and if you see for applying where clauses here you'll see you can pass in that find one you can pass an object so i could do something like this where and here i want to check if that email already exists because if the email exists then we don't want to uh, run this like we just we just don't want to proceed for we just want to say dude your account already exists so here we just need to say request dot body dot email and before this we also have to connect this so i'm going to say connect it's going to come from db config now i can do this asynchronously i can do this synchronously if i want to do it asynchronously i could just say sync and i say sorry synchronously then i would say await then it will be like it will wait till the connection happens and then it will proceed forward and once this is done next thing we need to do is we also need to catch the validation request so that we will catch first so we're going to say validation result that would be coming from the request so if there is any problem with the validation that that will be caught over here and i'm going to say this will be stored in the errors object like this and here i'm going to say if there are errors then in that case we need to send back the response so if i go to the validator and here if i show you uh here so this one so if there are errors so we just need to check if it's empty or not if it's empty 
that's great if it's not empty we just send back the result like this so for now let's just take this for here to save some time so we can just say if there are any errors we send the response back again now next thing is we go back over here and also need to check for user if the user already exists because if the user exists then we just need to make sure that we don't proceed with the registration so here i'm going to say user and here i'm going to say await from user so for our user model i'm gonna use find one so this everything is written in the sqlized documentation and there i'm going to use a where clause and my where clause will be email request or body that's perfect next thing is i want to make sure that the user doesn't exist so if the user exists here i'm going to return i can take this from here the only difference is now here i'm having a certain schema for this so there's errors and inside errors there will be certain parameters so it we can make it consistent so for now let's just say errors and inside errors we will say message but we will see once we get the actual errors from this validation what's what is the schema and we can modify it accordingly here i'm going to say user account already exists now you can use 400 or you could use 409 for conflict i would suggest 400 because uh there is a subjective topic on whether to use 409 or not 400 is actually kind of like a safer one now once this is done if user is not there in that case we create a user so let's make this instead of const i'm going to say let and here i will create a user i'm going to say user dot create and now here i will again need to use await because the thing is this sqlized queries would run on model like find one create they are asynchronous queries so they will return a promise so we need to make them synchronous by make awaiting for them and then here i could say first name is request dot body dot first name hash oh we haven't grabbed the hash password okay so let's write the hash password so here we need to write const hash password that would be bcrypt and we want to do it a synchronous hashing so come uh, hash sync and here it will take the plain text first as, as a parameter so that will be request.body.password and the number of salt rounds so it refers to how many rounds of hashing you want so for now we'll give default of 10 and then once this is done we can put here hash password and we are missing the contact field even though it's an optional but let's say if you want to take it as an optional field as well we can pass it here and what we can do is we could say this is contact and we will say it's string of minimum maximum length actually of 11 and we could say this is optional so in that case if you can pass it you don't pass it it doesn't matter but it's good to have a validation for that as well and here i could say contact request.body.contact now here if you want to make it like contact starting with plus sign like a country code and then numbers you can write your custom validation with customized functions or custom function and there you can pass a callback to validate your contact for now we'll keep it simple and then here once everything is great we will just send the user response.send user let's give this a try from postman postman client is working already so let's register we should get a validation request okay something went wrong right we didn't put it in the right sequence so again sequence mattered in this case so we just need to put this at the top connect we are not connecting before that's a mistake from me sorry for that so here i need to await for the connection await connect and we can also close the connection in from this db config so this close over here and now if we give it a try Validation error, invalid value, last name, message invalid value, last name, invalid value, last name. Uh, okay, so why we are getting only for last name so many times? Maybe because we have number of validations on last name, that's why. So in this case, we have, uh, if I go over here, you will see on last name, it should be a string, it should be of this, it should be of that. So because of these two validation rules, it is coming over here like this. So we are having that message so we can 
modify our error over here to be something like this msg so they can straight away whoever is dealing with the front end code they can know where to find for the message here i will pass the last name kadam send okay now it's asking for invalid value invalid value now you see it's giving like a message which is just a, like a default message which is of invalid value we can modify this if i go to validators we can modify it with custom error messages so there we could say with message what to do if the length is not right so in that case we need to do something like this let's say if this email if this is not email then here i could say with message email format incorrect now if i go over here from postman give it a go you'll see email format incorrect so we can have our custom messages for this validation now what let's put uh, the entire body request so we say email let's give this a try okay something went wrong let's see the errors it says close is not defined oh sorry i guess i didn't import it there we go did it get imported no let's import it to here close now let's give it a try again this time we will say user account already exists that's great now if we try with something else let's say example3.com give it a try there we go we have the successful response that's perfect now you can hide the password by making sure you only send particular details because you don't want to send password of the user to the front end so you can hide those by only sending particular details from this and you can also let's try it again if it sticks with the connection so if we go back again over here it says get connection was called after the connection manager was closed so that's what happened when you close the connection because by default sqlize will keep this up so when the connection is closed you need to create the instance again so you need to start from all over here again so that's why we can just terminate this and keep the connection open for now so if we try this again there we go user account already exists so in the next video we will see how we can organize this code and make it a structured code because if you notice we have so many cluttered things here like the boilerplate is getting too much bloated so let's see how we can make this organized so see you in the next video till the next time goodbye